Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. We give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Zihir Vasha. Tonight, let's kick things off with Asia's best pole vaulter, EJ Abiana. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Inside the Game. My name is Boom Gonzalez with the man, the man, <laughs> the man of the moment, the man of the hour, uh, EJ of Vienna. This is a completely different level now that you're reaching. Is it safe to say this is the best year of your competitive career? Depends on how the rest of the year goes, but I think <laughs> we started on a good side and we, we started on a good note. But yeah, I mean, I think it just shows like um last year there's a lot of things that was going on that i was not able to actually fully train and fully mm. um fully commit myself to the craft that i'm supposed to be focusing at or obsessing at and if you remember one uh, there was a time that my coach was saying you know why why is this happening now this is a time where we're supposed to harvest the hard work that we have done and I think this is just the shade of what we actually have been working on. It's a shade of what we we want to do. There's still a lot of things I need to to do to make this materialize and be to have it a good year, like you said. Yeah, just a quick throwback to the last SEA Games. Uh, obviously, it was a success. I mean, it was for the country, it was for the flag. You you got your goals, you defended, you shattered, you set new records. In terms of your year, I know how in your sport, you ramp up, right? To a certain um, level. And in your words, you you hit multiple peaks. So the SEA Games, you know, was part of a bigger plan. And yet you dominated and was successful. How did that happen? Just to recap the SEA Games. Um, the SEA Games was a bit of a... It was the odd one in the in the major championship for this year. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge going in because I was not sure in what shape I would be because we were not we're not going to risk the rest of the season for for Sea Games at that time. And it just so happened my coach is a genius and he's able to for me to win the Sea Games. And I guess you know the fifty five years of experience of coaching uh, definitely paid off and. <laughs> it was a it was a gamble that we needed to to do, but as I said, um, it was a gamble that is well calculated. Which brings us to you talked about heights. The other achievement of this year was the six meter club. And again, I point to our last conversation when we were in the studio together, and how there was an obsession towards that number. And why not? You know, um, first Asian. Uh, less than 30 to be able to do it. Your name's forever etched there. Nobody's going to be able to take that away from you. Were those the reasons why you were so emotional about it? Or were there other reasons now that you've been detached from it for a while that made it such a huge deal for you? Well, if I didn't jump six meters this year, I was going to shave my head. That was the, that was the bet with my coach. So <laughs> I didn't want to shave my head. <laughs> um, hey, I would want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> kidding aside, uh, but that was actually for real, but kidding aside, it was, it was a mark that I actually wanted to do, not just for me. I think it just shows the work that we are doing. We've been doing me and my coach and I knew I was capable of it. Like I, I told it last year, a couple of months. I knew that I was capable of it. I knew that I could do it. It's just a matter of, can I actually make it? Like do it, do it in an actual competition. It was that, and I'm pretty sure in the history of pole vaulting, there's a lot of people who have said, "Oh, I know I could do it," and the people who actually have done actually, it. Actually, yeah. and I was worried that in which side am I on? And being able to jump on the other side and be able to make it is definitely a, a big side of relief. Jumping six meters and being the first Asian, that also means the first in the history of sport to have jumped over six meters in the continent of Asia is a Filipino. I used to think, okay, I want to hold the Asian record, but then that is, you know, that could be broken. Like, oh, the Asian right. record is now hold held or held by a Filipino, that could be broken. But now in the rest of the history, 
nobody can can change that. Oh, yeah, there's another age now. The first、right. is gonna be Filipino forever, and I think that's、um, goosebumps because I I really do take pride about that, and I I'm really happy and、um, just overall just proud of of that ach- achievement or accomplishment because it's something that. A lot of pole vaulter aim to do, but few are actually able to do it. Was breaking the or getting into the six meter club? Did it free your mind that even made you perform better moving forward? And then now, obviously, qualifying for Paris in Stockholm. You know, because the obsession was so, you know, huge. I remember you were so passionate about it. But now that you got it, it's out of the way. It can never be taken away from you. Did it free your mind in terms of competition? It's actually the first time someone asked me if it actually made me better.、Mm-hmm. Thinking now, like now, I have not think about this that deeply. I think it it does. It liberates a little bit of it, and.、Um, But、it's not a significant change, I would say, in in my way of competing.、Um, I've. It's not that I'm. I'm saying that I'm. The way I approach the way I'm able to compete, and I think it does make it easier for me. It this it does give me confidence in myself, but it doesn't. You know, it doesn't change it in a, such a big magnitude.、Mm-hmm. Just kind of ease the burden. It's already done. I move on to the next. The next goal, obviously, was to qualify. You you hit the five point eighty two in Stockholm. You did not get the gold. You、uh, obviously it would have been better. But did it feel like gold for you? Because you know、uh, of the Paris qualifications, which you've been talking about also for quite a while. It's not okay. Well.、Oh. We gotta be honest, right? It doesn't feel like it's gold. Like that's, it, I think it's a little bit far from it.、Um, mm. Qualifying for Paris,、um, as of course, it's it is an achievement. I'm very happy about it. I'm I'm glad that it's out of the way. I'm, I'm very, you know, thankful that I'm able to do it in the first first go. But I wanted to win, and I think it was it was something that I wanted to do, and I I believe that it's I'm capable of doing it. It is possible.、Um, There's a lot of things that happened, and I think I could have competed better.、Mm. So, it not necessarily gave me, you know, I was happy that、oh, okay, I qualified, but that registered. But then, oh, I'm still in competition. I'm still, you know, gunning for what I came here to do. You want to win?、Um, yeah, unfortunately, I was not able to pull that off. But how do you say the French says? It's, c'est la vie. It's life. <laughs> it, it, it was Mondo's hometown, right? Yes, of course. Yes. So he wanted in his hometown,、uh, Mondo de Plantis, of course.、Um, yeah, and that's the answer that I would want to hear from you, honestly. That you still wanted to win. Qualifying is one thing; winning the competition is another. And I know there's another chance for you to do that. And you've had such a tremendous run. I don't think you have all your outdoor competitions. If I'm not mistaken, you've all finished in the podium. So,、um, if I'm not mistaken, that's how. Great! This run of yours has been the Tokyo Olympics. What were the lessons now? Now that your head is in Paris, and you can look back at Tokyo, which was such a challenging staging of the Olympics for everybody. What are the lessons for you that you can take to Paris? I would not let anybody get in my way.、Um, I might be respectful. I would, I would be very, you know, careful in the way I, I talk to people. I would be. Very smart in the way I deliver myself, but I would not let anybody like that could derail the things that I want to do. It's、uh, it's been you know I've learned that the hard way. It's it's something that I I would not allow again ever again, and it's something that I would I would not you know it's gonna be a decision that's very easy for me to make. That's how important Paris for me is. So I would、mm. do whatever. I need to prepare for Paris. I would do whatever I believe is right for me to be able to perform at my highest. It's just the way I would believe Tokyo would have been different. But now I'm given another chance,、uh, another opportunity, and it's 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 a rare thing to even happen. 
so I would not I would not let um, some debacle just you know mm -hmm. I would do whatever in my power and be able to to carry myself in the best position going into Paris now that gave me goosebumps <laughs> you know not a lot of people get to go obviously to one you get another shot at it so I'm sure uh, you know, you no no stone left unturned, as they say, for your Paris uh, co um, competition. I love it. I love it. I love talking to you, man. You always give me, sir. You know, me, and I'm I'm sure not, I'm not the only one. Give us inspiration and motivation whenever we hear these fighting words from you. Uh, I wish you more. More importantly, I wish you to stay healthy because it starts from there so that you can do whatever it is that you need to do and uh, achieve whatever it is that you need to achieve. So stay healthy and thanks for taking the time and talking to us here on The Game, EJ. Thank you very much, sir. That was Boom Gonzalez with EJ Obiena for Inside The Game. After the break. We'll shift to volleyball as we find out some courtside stories from a new PVL insider. Stay tuned. You're watching The Game. Back, you're watching the game. The PVL may be on a break this week, but we've got a lot of courtside stories to share from the first few games of the Invitational Conference. Now, let's relive some of the best moments from the heated clash between the Signal HD Spikers and the F2 Logistics Cargo Movers with the newest PVL oh. insider graduating from the UAP, Kyla King Su. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome. Hello. Welcome to the PVL. How do you feel about that, making that transition from the colleges to the pros? It feels so surreal. You know, I had a mini reunion nga with Jelena and Mars covering my first game for F2 against Signal. And it was so fulfilling and I was just so happy to have my PBL, PBL debut alongside Jelena and Mars who were such a big part of my journey. I mean, aside from having this mini reunion, like what was it that made you so excited to, you know, 
finally cover the pros and then bonus pa yung makover mo si F2. Yeah. Yes, covering F2, I guess. It was just kaka proud talaga watching them transition to the pros, you know, really embracing the challenge mm -hmm. given to them by Coach Reg to be starters for the first right. two games. And, you know, they came up um, with another win, their second win of the conference. You know, you mentioned Julina, you mentioned Mars, and I could only imagine that, okay, first game nila sa pros, maybe, maybe a little bit of nerves, kinakabahan ng konti. How did you feel when you made your <laughs> debut? And of course, you relate ka ba to what they felt uh, if they've ever told you anything about it? Definitely. I had the first day jitters as per usual. I actually went to the Signal dugout first. And there, the first person I interviewed was Rachel. Mm. And she was kind enough to introduce me to the rest of her teammates. Okay. Given a you know, first time courtside for um, PVL, I was very nervous. But you know, I asked Rachel, um, what's new with Signal this time around? You know, they were coming off their first win of the conference. And she told me that this version of Signal, they've already gone through their lapses and studied their weaknesses. And this time, may hugot sila to really bounce back in this conference. I mean, seeing and being with Rachel on your first day <laughs> on the job, like, how was it? Like, did she exude any vibe of, you know, as being the leader of the team? Yes, definitely. She is the captain after all for a reason. And she was really on fire in set two of the last matchup. And although she's very talented and, you know, famous as we know her, she's she was very sweet and humble toward me. Yeah, you know, and Rachel, uh, she's a queen in many ways and uh, very good at making sure that, you know, everyone feels at home. And uh, speaking about making some of her teammates feel at home, uh, Vani Gander coming in for Signal uh, after her Ateneo graduation. Literally, uh, again, Vani literal Gander. from the colleges <laughs> to the pros. I mean, Vani Gander, I'm sure you have something to say about her. Yeah, so actually I spoke to Coach Shaq before the game about Vani and he told me that since day one of you know, approaching her and trying to recruit her, she's always been very open and humble. And she expressed that all she wants in the pros is to really grow as much as she can. And, you know, her coming straight from her graduation is just a testament to her commitment, not only to the team, but to her personal growth. I mean, how was the situation over at the, Siguro, at the bench, at the court side, when Vani showed up mid-game? It was an intense four-setter. Yeah, she yeah. showed up mid-game. And actually, I saw her right before I was about to report. Okay. So I got to add it in that, you know, she's warming up in the sidelines and we might see, we might be seeing action from her. Indeed, she didn't run in with a toga though, right? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> All right, so apart from the fact that you have now graduated from the UAP to the PVL, that also means that the slot for DLSU is now open in terms of the correspondence for the UAP. In fact, they're doing a search for that right now. Ooh. When you look back at your experience as a UAP correspondent, for those interested in actually doing what you did, just how did it change your life? How did it change um, the way that you look at this work that you're doing? And of course, how special is it uh, in terms of your experience? As you mentioned, the UAP really changed my life. It was a huge plot twist. You know, I've mentioned this before, but I grew up as a dancer who really didn't have the time to learn, watch, or you know, join any other sports. But I learned along the way that as long as you have a growth mindset, you're willing to put in the work and you know, show up prepared, then you can make anything happen. So you don't need the background for it as long as you can even be a dancer, okay lang yan. You might end up as the next correspondent. And Z, how do they do that? Well, you gotta be part of the family that will fuel the future as a UAAP Season 86 correspondent. Check out the UAAP Varsity channel on social media to find out how you can send in your application. All right, so that was Kyla King Su. Maraming salamat. Uh, we really appreciate so the time, especially uh, from all the Lasallians uh, to you. Thank you very much for your service last season. <laughs> yes, and of yeah. course, <laughs> Animo Lasall, and we'll see you in the PVL. Maraming salamat. Thank you so much for having me. All right, after the break, we'll find out more about Gilas Pilipinas pool member Poy Eram and his lifelong dream of representing the country on the court. Keep it here, you're watching the game.
John Paul Aram will never say no to a chance to play for the Philippines. Simula nung bata pa ako eh. Simula nung tuto ko mag-basketball. Simula nung uh, sinasabihan ako na hindi ako, hindi ako walang mararating, ganyan. So, for me, uh, every time na mag-nanak yung door ng Gilas Pilipinas para sa akin, it's always a no-brainer. Laging ako yung sagot ko kasi ever since bata ako, yun yung pangarap ko eh. Even when the situation is unfavorable. mag improve kayo, tapos condition ng katawan nyo talaga man. Uh, Tawag ito, mag improve din. Pati yung attitude, mag improve din. So ako, doon ako nag-rely. Kasi sabi ko rin naman sa wife ko, sabi ko, I'm not, hindi sure na malaline up ako dito. Pero sure ako na mag improve ako. Sure ako na pagbalik ko. Ibang player ako pagbalik ko after itong training kami ito, itong mga, itong mga tune-up namin. The first Gilas team for the Jakarta Palembang Asian Games. It was a time when the mainstays were not available due to suspensions. He fought for a spot and battled as best as he could, even losing a couple of teeth in one particular match. Eram would return to Indonesia years later as he also joined a very young Gila squad in the FIBA Asia Cup with basically no rest from his PBA duties with TNT. Now he knows a spot in the final 12 for the World Cup is not guaranteed for anyone. For me, as a basketball player, yung growth ng knowledge ko mas lalaki pa, diba? And then, syempre, hindi naman ako, hindi naman ako bumabata eh. Umaan na rin ako, tumatanda na rin ako. So, nandun na rin ako, transitioning na din ako kahit pa paano dun sa yung knowledge na matututunan ko, masishare ko pagbalik ko sa team, dun sa mga mas bata sa akin. So, dun, yun ang, go yun ang goal ko. Is to, malaya na pa na ako hindi, I'm happy. Kasi, alam ko, makakatulong ako sa team, kahit man lang sa practice, makapagsalita ako, makapagsabi ako sa kanila kung anong dapat gawin. Competing for one of 12 roster spots against World Cup veterans Junmar Fajardo and Zapit Aguilar and exciting youngsters such as Kai Soto and AJ Edu, Eram knows that he has a lot of work to do. Kasama mo, yun nga, sabi mo, may mga pangalan. Sila Zapit, si Junmar. Uh, si the keeper internationally, di ba? So, being with this guy, sila Justin Brownlee, makasama mo, uh, being with them, knowing kung ano yung alam nila sa basketball. And then, to share sa lahat sa amin, tapos lalo na sa akin, ma-share sa akin sila Junmar, sila Javit, ma-share man nila. Tapos makita ko yung work ethic nila kung gano'n sila magtrabaho. Malaking bagay na yun para sa akin. But with his continued improvement and development personally and professionally, Eram will give it his all and accept whatever result. One thing, pag sinabi na, oy, laro ka sa gilas, okay, sige. Lahat ng outside noise, wala yun. Lahat ng problema ko outside, wala. Alam, alam nila yun na parang pag sinabi mong po ay nagilas, ito na yun buo. Wala, wala, kang, wala kang maririnig, walang problema, walang kahit na ano, walang negative, wala. Here we go, Tama Pilipinas! Uso! From Tallinn, Estonia, Carlo Pamintuan. Well, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Zihir Basho. And I'm Paolo De Rosario. This has been The Game.